Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. It's gonna be a fun episode, but I feel the need to apologize. If you guys did stop by yesterday, there was a bit of a, a miscombobulation with the dates. I thought it was April 1st, turns out it was May 1st. It was What was meant to be a joke was taken seriously. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you did miss yesterday's short episode where I was taken over, uh, here's a quick, another clip of that. The funny part that I thought of it. If Jake made this video, he'd be like, Hello guys, everyone, welcome to another exciting CSK News. Anyway guys, okay, let's jump into the video. But I saw the comment section, and it was a mix of hate and of course liking. If you guys don't know who it was, it was actually B-Hop. B-Hop's a famous CSK cheater who I'm actually friends with. And it kind of brought up a debate, which I'll not talk about much today. But I just want to say, I do like the guy. And I understand a lot of you guys do like him. A lot of you guys don't like him. But overall, it was meant to be a joke. He offered... Uh, to actually you know, do that clip for me. It was originally going to be part of a, a news episode, but I thought, why not make it a dedicated video? So just first off, for all of you guys who commented nice things or anything at all, thank you guys very much for understanding. I am actually back doing CSK News. Yes, I graduate in a couple days, um, but he will not be taking over my channel. But his channel will be linked down below. Um, yes, he does cheat in CSGO. I don't approve of what he does. I love and hate him, guys. I, I love the guy for his personality. I hate him for what he does. But just anyway, welcome back to CSK News, guys. Here's our first story. But anyway, guys, there's a lot of news out there to talk about of course the first one in big news out there people weren't sure if it's rumors or of course confirmed right now apparently optic gaming partnered with two companies out there one called so strong and the other partner known as afk gaming actually released an official article i'll link it down below for all of you guys where it seems that optic gaming is actually going to expand their csgo rosters not just to their of course their newly formed danish roster of course that fully european roster where they kick stanislaw and shazam for yugi and snappy from heroic but apparently looking now to acquire a full indian csgo roster which kind of blew people's minds but it does seem as of right now completely legit. So I'll link the article down below again for all of you guys. It seems that of course India being, I guess the premise here would be 1.3 billion people live in India so of course you probably could find five good CSGO pro players or at least they're crossing their fingers hoping so and on top of that they're going to be hosting tryouts all across India of course next week and apparently going to finalize the roster by mid to late May. So it's all apparently confirmed guys, not rumors at all unless it's some kind of weird troll which I don't think it actually is. The article looks legit and of course it's a partnering company with Optic Gaming and their partner Infinite. So apparently Infinite CSGO is going to take over all CSGO rosters internationally and they're going to look to extend into Indian CSGO for the first time ever. And in more breaking news, kind of on the funnier side, of course we talked about it last episode, Config being uh, the next toxic player in CSGO. It seems like everyone's taking their shot at him right now, especially Smuya, of course the newest uh, big clan member. Of course he actually had this clip. If you guys have not seen this clip, it's very, it kind of spread like wildfire over the past few days where he calls out Config and said if he talked trash in person to him in Danish and not English, he would break his teeth in. So here's that clip in, in context. What's your opinion on the whole optic thing? I don't know, dude. If I was getting flamed in another language while going for dinner with someone, I'd punch the fucking teeth in. Especially if they look like fucking config. <laughs> And so, of course, Config saw this. He tweeted out the clip, and of course, like I said before, it spread like wildfire, so there's really no chance of him not seeing it. Um, and on top of that, he also responded, you know, of course, well, let's, let's fight it out. And if, then we have what him asking for a time and place, and Smoothie replying, come on then. So apparently, guys, a YouTuber, I was going to say YouTuber, a CSGO boxing card is going to fight. We're going to have Smoothie and Config on the primary card. If anyone else out there wants to fight people like me, I'm, I'm sure maybe MoTV, even though I saw his last video, so that probably wouldn't be a, a good idea. But if anyone else out there, I'm sure there's plenty of haters, we could start a CSGO go boxy match card I think that'd be hilarious to see name your combinations down below I also tweet out about this you guys had some great combinations uh, the funniest one I saw was actually K and G and FNS but there's tons of rivalries out there in CSGO so comment down below who you'd like to see fight besides Config and Smuya. and also in breaking news yesterday guys Sado Kiss is officially unbanned on Twitch now people actually were commenting a long time ago when of course that whole thing was going on the controversy of Sado Kiss in his clips and why he was actually banned from Twitch and of course taking some a, a decent amount of time and, and probably good good news to hear he's taken a good good decent amount of time away from his events. Of course, people actually speculated as well uh, through all the companies he works with that actually stream on Twitch. Apparently, they're not allowed to use a caster or a commentator who is si simultaneously uh, actually banned on Twitch. They're not allowed to use those personalities. So that was a rumor out there. I'm not sure if this is actually confirmed, but he's now unbanned on Twitch, guys. You can go to his Twitch page and apparently he will be hopefully back sometime soon. We can still imagine, I think it's a great idea for him to take this small amount of break, but we can still imagine his first event back on Twitch or any, you know, any platform is going to be pretty rough, but hopefully people can actually look past that. Also, bouncing off that, guys, as well, we have some big breaking news out there involving the newest, young, youngest FPL member to actually join FPL League. Uh, I always say FPL League. I'm so sorry. The new youngest member to actually join FPL ever since Frozen did it a couple years ago at the age of just 16. He has now shattered that record. His name is Obo, guys, and he is just 14 years old. He went through FPL Challenger and qualified for FPL, and I, I just can't even wrap my mind around. 
I have a lot of friends out there. This is gonna this is gonna sound. Uh, my Discord's full of people, you know, aged from 14 to 20 years old. So it's amazing to see that people this young can be this talented inside the game of CS:GO. Certainly a great future for this guy, just 14 years old, and he has now made FPL, the new youngest member to ever join the league. And in very surprising and kind of saddening news out there, I've talked about Peacemaker a lot in the past. Of course, a coach who's been bounced around over the past couple of years, countless times, and honestly, he's becoming the Mike Lilly of coaches. And please leave a comment down below what you guys think about this. We finally thought he'd actually been given a place where he could actually sit down and settle for a long time. It seems due to health issues, other background issues, he has now left Heroic and been replaced by one of their former players, Madi, as that coaching role. He does plan to return to coaching in the future, but if you guys look at his past, he has not been able to stick with the team for more than six months in over two to three years. Of course, I can't even memorize the entire list. I know the teams are Liquid, NRG, Misfits, Ty Lu, and now Heroic. There might be one other there. That's five teams, less than six months, and we finally thought he actually had a contract until the December of this upcoming year. That's seven months away, guys, for Heroic, and apparently he's actually left that contract seven months early. That contract is now over, and he's now stepping back from the coaching role. He does plan to return in the future, but it's just kind of shocking to see of all the, I guess you could say the few handful of coaches out there, they seem to be very, you know, very sturdy in where they lie, but it seems like he is one of the few out there that can travel from team to team within a few months span. So I hope the best for him, of course, in his future, but it just seems like he's been bouncing from team to team. I am going to be very surprised by whoever he joins next if they actually give him a chance. And also in very cool news out there, of course, in the music industry, a lot of a lot of sponsors out there stepping in to actually, of course, uh, kind of invest in the esports scene very late, but of course, they're still here. Of course, we had Steve Aoki, a very well-known DJ musician back in the day. He was actually a part-time investor for Rogue. He then sold off his investment to Rect Global, and apparently Imagine Dragons has now invested into Rect Global, who currently is still invested into, into, uh, into uh, Team Rogue Gaming. So okay, I guess kind of by the, the transitive property, guys, Imagine Dragons becomes one of the first, I guess you could say, um, bands out there to actually, or groups out there to actually invest heavily into Rogue and an esports team, especially in the CSGO scene. So that's really cool to see. Of course, Imagine Dragons, a very well-known, I guess you could say, group out there. So congrats to, to Rogue and Direct Global as well. It looks like they're seeking investment and doing very well on that platform. It kind of reminds me of, of you guys as well, if you guys missed this a couple weeks ago, we also had Team NRG, the North America team, and, and actually announced one of their investors known as Tiesto. Tiesto, if you guys do not know, I'll show you guys his Twitter. He is very well known. I think it's actually a Dutch DJ as well. He's very well known, over 5 million followers. So it's kind of crazy to see the musician or the music scene get invested into esports as well. We also have the NBA, the MLB, all these other, I guess you could say, pro sports out there, and I guess singing would be one of them, trying to invest into esports. It just goes to show you guys the future is still there, especially for CSGO. Um, I know we had recent tweets from Anomaly though, and of course you guys know the struggle CSGO is going through. I still think the game has a chance, but this is for a whole nother video, guys. I am honestly worried where we are in CSGO right now. Like, I've, I've never been this worried about the game as I am right now, and that's just kind of scary to say. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, I do want to announce, guys, today is my very, very last, I guess you could say, drinking special stream. I'll be doing my uh, my episode number three for Valve Cases versus Gambling Cases on live stream on YouTube tonight. So if you guys want to click the notification bell to actually get notified for that, I might be doing a knife giveaway as well. Also other giveaways and viewer games. I'll be opening uh, 120 cases actually and also doing some very fun things on there. But that'll be for my episode three of that series. So it should be a really fun time on live stream. It's also my very last drinking stream to celebrate me graduating. It'll be my very last stream likely to be in this apartment. So if you guys want to stop by, I'd very much appreciate that. But very lastly, guys, if you've been watching, of course, our latest tournament, IEM Sydney, going on right now, the group stages are of course going to finish up today and this weekend should be very fun with it. We saw a surprise team. That was actually Greyhounds, the Australian team, who kind of surprised everyone. They went out in group stages. They lost to FaZe Clan this morning, but still had a pretty heroic run. They also beat SK in a best of one, which is not a huge surprise, but it's still kind of amazing to see um, their kind of their way of comebacks. They're great with pistols, so on and so forth, but it's great to see these little teams get a little bit of limelight because you find some very, very rare names out there, like one of their players known as Dick Stacy, and I've seen one of the funniest clips. I have to show this to you guys. I'm sure you guys saw it as well. Probably the funniest, the funniest player clip I have ever seen for CSGO, and I'm going to end that episode right here guys so thank you all for watching hope you guys all enjoyed i'll see you all in a couple days and enjoy big dick stacy uh yes indeed alex uh and you know first of all i just want to say the intel extreme master sydney 2018 poised to be a hell of an event and right now i'm standing behind the greyhound players uh, of course, they do have a pretty big task ahead of them when they come into this tournament, uh, looking to turn some heads. But of course, I'm standing here with uh, Big Dick Stacy. Talk to me about the team's expectations as we go into this tournament. Um, so the team's uh, expectations going into this tournament, um, we're pretty thick and pumped right now. Um, we're going in, just heads up, going straight in there, nice and hard, and uh, see what we got and deliver. I don't know if I could have said it any better myself.